the SPCA, where we are going to introduce you in the next segment to three of the six rescued sled dogs. We're going to find out what they need as far as homes, who the best suited for, and also if you don't have a home for them, how you can also help. That's all coming up next. Yeah, very talkative group here in Burnaby. We're here at the SPCA where, uh, Ryan, we've got some beautiful dogs here that need homes. First of yes. all, how did uh, you come to get these uh, sled dogs? So we have uh, three of them here already that uh, came from a sled dog operation up in Pemberton that uh, had to shut down their doors because they no longer had the property in which they were staying. Uh, so some of them were rehomed at other uh, sled dog operations. Others were rehomed to some other rescues. And then we have six here, of which three you can see right now that and, are looking for And homes. let's introduce everybody. So we yes. have... We have May. May. We have Angel. Angel, can you spin? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, come on over here. And then, and then we have Goofy, who's on, a little Goofy. camera shy, who's over with uh, Mallory, who's been working a lot with, uh, with them. Now, first and foremost, homes would be great. What kind of family is best suited to a sled dog? Well, funnily enough, most homes would be suitable for a sled dog. What we first look for, though, is one, particularly with these guys, with another dog. Okay. Uh, they are a little bit uh, fearful so and anxious, so it's good to have another confident dog in the home to kind of show them the ropes and get them used to, to home life. So not necessarily, enough, like, adopting two of these maybe is not the right... No, not necessarily, not, necessarily, not at all. Okay. No, if you've got another dog already in the home and you were thinking about bringing on a second okay. one, these would be the perfect uh, ones to bring in. And obviously a huge commitment. I mean, we're looking for forever homes here as well. And maybe, you know, adopting a dog might not be right for everybody, but there is another way that people can help and it's a very important one with a strict deadline too. There is. Uh, currently we do have a donor here in Burnaby that's uh, matching any donation uh, up to a twenty up to $20,000 okay. throughout the course of July. So if you're not able to adopt, definitely uh, make a donation. We've spent about uh, $3,000 in vet care for these guys alone. So, so they need uh, you need the cash exactly. to help keep them healthy and people can do for that sure. of course online as well. Any questions just call the SVCA but we're going to be hanging out with these sled dogs, these beautiful sled dogs all morning long guys. Yeah, and we've got uh, six sled dogs or former sled dogs that are available for adoption. And in fact, I think maybe one of them has some pending adoption as yes. well, which is great news. Yes, we have May, who's just gone inside for a little for her medication this morning, has got a pending home. Uh, but we brought Zig out, who loves his little gingerbread man. <laughs> he so, loves a gingerbread but he man. He does not love the camera. <laughs> so uh, he's being a little shy. He's, he's a little more shy, but here. And of course, yeah, we've heard earlier too that people can help by donating. Of course, there's going to be a matching donation up to twenty thousand dollars if people donate um, by Thursday, and that's to help with the dental care. Exactly, it's to help with the dental care and all of the animals that we receive through our shelter on a yearly basis. That the Burnaby branch alone, we spend about fifty thousand dollars on uh, on medical care for the for the dogs, cats, and other animals that we receive. Now, so. one of the things that people need to be, I guess, even in general, regardless of which kind of animal they're adopting, is integration. What do people need to know about integrating? a pet from the SBCA into their home? First off is patience. It's what people need to really come up, to come and realize that uh, they're not going to be used to your kind of living situation. They may be used to a certain schedule, that sort of thing. They may be used to a certain way of living. So coming into the new home, they're going to take some time for them to learn and figure out uh, what the rules are of the house. Uh, these guys in particular, they've never been inside a house generally, so it's going to take them some time to realize that uh, perhaps jumping on the coffee table isn't uh, appropriate behavior. So to be patient and using, these guys are very motivated by food, so using the food to kind of uh, mark the behavior that you're looking for. Just Kind of like, like Angel, right? Ah, exactly. Beautiful. So you get the behavior you want, then you give her her treats. So. Wonderful. Well, if anyone wants to um, look into adopting any of these former sled dogs, or even if you just want to donate, maybe you can't bring a dog into your home, check out the SPCA for more details. And again, if they can make that donation by Thursday, that is ideal. Oh, well, we're going to meet Shiloh and Pepper coming up next. And who is the person that's donating, that's matching this $20,000 donation or up to $20,000 donation to help with dental care and many other things that they need here at the SPCA? We're going to meet that person coming up next and also find out about these little guys. They need a home. Oh, yes, they do. We'll be right back. Oh, we got lots of good friends out here at the Burnaby SPCA. And speaking of friends, a great friend of the SPCA, we've been talking about this matching donation, uh, again, of up to $20,000 for people that donate uh, by Thursday. And uh, Roseanne, how generous. Uh, first of all, you have also over the years been generous with your time. You volunteer as well with the SPCA. What kinds of things do you do? I come in uh, once a week and walk these wonderful dogs. And I also uh, bring dogs home and foster them on occasion as well. Wow. So, I mean, not not only are you, are you hands-on with your support of the SBCA, but such a generous <laughs> offer to donate up to that $20,000. Why did you want to do that? The SBCA is such a fabulous organization, and with it being 
only government funded. They really rely on donors to make these animals healthy and put them in a position where they can find their happy homes. And just to be a part of that is great. Wow, Ryan, what does it mean for you to know that not only is she so generous with her time, but also with the money? And where will that money go? It's it's absolutely amazing. And we've got so many supporters out there like Roseanne that donate um, constantly. And uh, I'm happy to say that we actually only got $3,300 left uh, <laughs> to uh, get to the uh, other 20000 So it's absolutely amazing. And people need to know that we are a nonprofit organization and we don't get government funding to do the work that we do to help out uh, guys like uh, Pepper and Shiloh, who, of course, are looking for a home. And uh, they were surrendered to us because, unfortunately, their guardians uh, uh, wasn't able to care for him anymore after uh, <laughs> his wife had passed away. Aww. So it wasn't because he didn't care for these guys. It was because he cared for them that he decided that he wasn't able to put in that proper time and brought them to us for us to find them a new home. So they are a bonded pair. One of them, uh, Pepper, he is wearing pink for pride this week. So uh, <laughs> we're hoping that uh, somebody is, that's uh, willing to take uh, two dogs into their home uh, would be more than uh, happy to bring them in as well because they are bonded and... Uh, they really need a home as well. So, and of course, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do without the support of our donors like Roseanne. And so, volunteers exactly. as well. And fostering. They always need foster parents, uh, Jody and Riaz. For more details on how you can help and all the criteria that's involved, again, these guys are looking for forever homes. You can check out the SBC's website. That sounds just delicious, but you know, these guys are happy with hot dogs as well. Coming up next, we're going to tell you once again how you could potentially adopt one of these sled dogs, how you can donate, and also with the hot weather, how do we keep our pets safe? That's all coming up. Yeah, beautiful day out here in Burnaby, hanging out at the Burnaby SPCA, where they have this great outdoor space you guys have for the dogs to run around, which is so nice. The dogs absolutely love it, and so do our two sled dogs here, Goose or Goofy. I keep calling them <laughs> Goose for some reason, and uh, Mavis, who are both looking for homes. Two of six that uh, are were available. I think you've still got one that's maybe got a pending adoption. Yes. Um, first and foremost, what do people need to know about potentially adopting these dogs? First off, they tend to be a bit anxious, these guys. They're not used to a normal home environment, so patience is going to be the, the word that you're going to need to keep in the back of your mind for them when they're coming into that new home. Uh, and a lot of them would do well with a, with a home with another more confident dog to kind of show them the ropes in a home environment. Having spent all morning with them, though, they're very well behaved and uh, somewhat trained as well, which is kind of nice as well for people to have. Yes, and that's something that our volunteers work on on a daily basis to help with those sorts of things and to teach them those behaviors that they want to see. So. Now, they look nice and comfortable right here under this bit of a shelter. The weather is getting warm once again. We need to remind people how to exactly. keep the dogs safe. I don't know why we have to remind everybody every year, but it's important for people to know in weather conditions like this, dogs should stay at home, out in the yard. If you've got a nice little setup like this where they have some shade, that's a great spot. Or inside their in their conditioned building, a car is not a place for the dogs to be in this kind of weather. If someone sees a dog in a car, one that's obviously in distress. First of all, how can they recognize they're in distress and then what should they do? Uh, typically a dog that's going to be in distress and succumbing to the heat is going to be actually lethargic. They're not going to be responding to you tapping on the window, uh, maybe tongue hanging out, that sort of so thing. So barking doesn't necessarily mean barking, I'm in distress. D barking doesn't necessarily mean okay. in distress. That's usually I'm happy to see you or I'm just excited. Okay. So it's more when you see somebody like Mavis, who's, who's kind of, she's acting for us right now. <laughs> if she's like this in the, in, the, in the car and not really responding to you, that's when you need to be concerned. And if you see a situation like this, uh, contact our cruelty line or get a hold of the uh, your local police or our CMP. They'll always respond as well. And to clarify, Mavis is clearly not distressed. No. Just sunbathing, <laughs> she's Jody. Just sunbathing, and yes. Re yes. Anyone wants to adopt any sled dogs, check out the website. Also a reminder that they have until Thursday as well to continue to bring those donations up to the SBC up to $20,000 for a $20,000 matching donation. So lots of great work out here this morning. Too sweet. Look at that face. It's a dog's life, isn't it?